Is the active track and obstacle avoidance any good on the Mini 3 Pro? Today I have put it through multiple tests. I'm going to see uh, what's good and what's bad about it, uh, what its limits are, and at the end we're going to see if I can get it through this woodland with a heel inside, um, through one side and out the other side without it crashing. So let's get started. Okay guys, so to get started all you have to do is basically tap on what you want to um, active track and uh, draw a box around it or press the plus button if it finds you and um, you can basically just press go and it will start following you. So already it's a really quick and easy process to get started. Now um, you have got a few choices, um, I'm mainly going to be um, focusing on trace today because uh, trace mode when you're doing the active track is the only one that you can use without obstacle avoidance. Parallel, if you turn that on, you will lose your obstacle avoidance. At this point, it's also worth pointing out that obstacle avoidance will only work in uh, city mode and normal mode. So if you're going into sports mode, uh, it will switch off and you may hit something and crash. Also, the drone has no side sensors. So in active track, um, always be wary if the drone is moving sideways. So now that that's out of the way, I'm just going to quickly explain. Uh, basically trace mode, um, the drone will try to follow you as you're going along and it will follow behind you. Now as you can see here, it's in uh, trace mode and it's actually almost around the front of me. And uh, this is because whilst, um, whilst in trace mode, you can actually still use your right hand uh, joystick on your remote and uh, push it in front of you. So the iPhone recording is a, is a bit laggy. So what I'm going to do is go through to the camera view. And uh, you can see here, um, this is basically what your final outcome will be. Um, it's not absolutely perfect, but I still think it's pretty smooth and it's uh, certainly usable footage. So here I decided to see if I could outrun the uh, active track. And as you can imagine, being so close to the drone, it's fairly easy to do. So if you are trying to uh, fool the drone, it is easy to do that. What I'd recommend is if you don't want to lose a drone, maybe flying a bit further away from yourself, uh, giving the drone more time to react. And uh, instead of flying in city mode, fly in normal mode. Alternatively, uh, just make sure the drone's following behind you instead of in front of you. And then that way you won't really be able to lose it by running. Now whilst running around, um, I did want to go back a bit further and I realised that the drone couldn't actually be that far away from you. So what I did was I worked out the uh, minimum distance it could be and the maximum distance it could be. So what I did is I started the return to home point and flew the drone as close as possible to me. And, uh, and by doing that, I found out the closest distance would be two metres. And then um, I started pushing it away further and further. And quite disappointingly, I found out the furthest away I could go was seven meters, uh, which is actually a lot lower than I would expect and certainly lower than I'd hoped for. Uh, but it did make me question how high it could go. Um, so seven meters was a horizontal distance away, but I could actually push it up into the air 22 meters before it reached its maximum height. And you can see around me, there's a little person. The, uh, the drone can distinguish between people and cars, so if I was a vehicle or a bigger person, it would actually give me a greater range. Now, another thing I did find was that whenever I went under anything, the drone would always lose me. So um, I could walk past certain objects, but as soon as I went underneath something, uh, the drone just did not know what to do. Um, if you walk out the other side quick enough, it will refind you and carry on. Otherwise it will just stop, say it hasn't found you and the drone won't move. So I didn't have the perfect place to test this on the car, but what I decided to do was go to the road about 35 meters up and see if I could find one. And as you can see here, I found one very quickly and actually what I had to do was tap the screen and it straight away looked for a car and then I selected it and it started following it instantly. And you can see here I'm following it 10 meters per second and it's running very well. And actually I've stopped it here because right in front of us is a garden center and just past that is a school. And I don't want to give the drone police a reason to come and start chasing me. Okay, so uh, 10 meters per second was 22 miles an hour. And as you could see, it was following that very easily. And um, if that wasn't fast enough, we could still put it into sports mode and get some extra speed out of it. 
If people would like a video solely on active track on cars, um, I'd have to go out to countryside. So if I get a lot of likes and interest in this video, it's something that I'll consider doing. Okay, so as promised, um, here is the attempt at getting through the woodland with the drone. I'm going to start off slow and then try to speed it up. Now, um, in a minute, you're going to see orange and red um, things appear like in a circle around me. These are going to be um, the obstacle avoidance being detected. So anything like the orange on screen now, uh, that's something that's been detected, but it's a bit further away. And if something's red, it's something that needs to be reacted to a bit more urgently. Now the beeps you can hear in the background is the obstacle avoidance working. <laughs> it's a really, really horrible sound. Now, they could have replaced it with something a bit less annoying like a baby crying. Uh, but I don't know how to mute it yet. So uh, for now, we're just gonna have to put up with it. But what I will do is mute it in the video for people at home. Now, um, it actually got stuck between these two trees. It didn't want to pass them, which I thought was quite odd. There seems to be plenty of space for it to get through, but obviously it's a bit challenging for the drone. Um, so what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd give it a bit of a helping hand by pushing it to the sides. So I got to this position here and pushed it around and uh, hoped it would find me again the other side. And I was quite happy to see that it could do this. And this is something I don't believe we could achieve in Litchi. So I started going and you can see here that actually there's a thin branch in front of me and I thought that this might be a chance of it hitting that but it does seem to detect it and just go over the top. So that was actually something that I thought was really good. I mean uh, some twigs with some leaves on it should be really hard I would have thought for a drone to pick up but actually it's moved around them very easily and um, I've continued on my way. As you can see, I'm constantly looking over my shoulder here, uh, obviously really wary. Um, <laughs> I haven't had the best tra track record with uh, testing drones, so I have lost one before. So um, I've got my finger hovering over the return to home button, so uh, if it's ever going to hit anything I can just uh, tap the return to home button and it'll stop exactly where it is. And that's a really good tip to take with you, so um, if you're flying any DJI drones and you think you're going to hit a bit of trouble, tapping the return to home button will stop the drone in its tracks. Now I've also put the drone in automatic um, shooting for this. Um, the only reason for that is that I didn't want to have to keep changing it manually as I was going through the woods with different amounts of shade and sunlight. So it did need a bit of help getting up the hill, um, but we got there in the end and most importantly, uh, it didn't crash with anything. So um, that's really good. So um, this next part, I'm going down the hill. Uh, it's quite wide and open here. And um, as you'd expect, I don't have any trouble at all getting through these trees. So once we would come out, I decided to see if it would lose track of me if I went and hid behind this tree. Well, I say hid, I'm just going to walk around it. So we can see it did lose me for a second, but it also found me again and um, it carried on following. Now this wasn't completely smooth, but the drone was turning as I did it. So this time I decided to keep walking in a straight line and see if it followed me. And as you can see, it's guessing where I'm going and picked me up in the perfect place. And it did it really nice and smoothly. So this would be something really usable if an object gets in the way. And I'm just going to try it one last time. But uh, this time the drones decided to follow me around the tree instead. And that works just as well. So now I'd built up my trust a bit with the uh, sensors. I'm still checking my screen very often. But what I decided to do was to see if I could run through the woods um, without the drone crashing. My theory being that if I kept quite wide from any trees and took a path that I thought the drone would like to follow, it would follow it in one continuous motion. So this is what I tried. <laughs> I did struggle running downhill, so I'm walking down here. And um, so far so good. And this were the trees that got stuck on last time. So I've gone um, slightly through the middle and it's worked perfectly. So I did actually manage to get a really nice smooth, um, smooth bit of footage when I went quite fast through the woods. So that was something that um, I was really happy with. Now something else I wanted to try was switching from trace to parallel active track um, without stopping recording. Um, obviously this could be really useful, so I've tried that. 
and as you can see it still works so um what you can do is in trace you can move the drone around you and then switch over to parallel and um, the drone will stay in the same spot and you don't have to worry about moving it anymore uh, the one thing that it does say is that obstacle avoidance does not work in parallel and um, active track so make sure that uh, you know what's around you and you're in a nice wide open space now here I'm still playing with a parallel active track and we can see I can still easily move the drone around me side to side using the right hand joystick. So something else I wanted to try out was um, going through some sort of a rocky terrain, climbing over this branch here. It's got a chance to lose sight of me and also there's lots of things to crash onto that are quite small. It managed to go under the branch and then it also uh, detected the other branches here and went over them and it still followed me even though I had some things in front of me. Now my only concern is this bit here where um, the drone sort of bounces backwards. To be fair it does it smoothly, it's just a, it's a really weird kind of camera movement, it's not something that I'd want to use. However it is usable, there's also one very small sort of movement to the left here which I don't like, there it was. Um, but again, still usable, still smooth, and most importantly, the drone is still flying. Something else to bear in mind is that if I was going to do this shot again, I would just keep the drone down slightly lower and we wouldn't have an issue with it bouncing around the branch. So overall, I was actually really impressed with the obstacle avoidance and the active track on the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Um, the thing I particularly liked was that obviously it doesn't crash, it's generally quite smooth. Um, it does seem to pick up small objects such as twigs and leaves, which is obviously going to be really important because there's going to be stuff like that around if you're flying near the countryside. Now there were some downsides. Um, the biggest one for me was that I couldn't fly more than seven meters horizontally away from myself or a human object. Um, I really feel it should be a lot further than that and hopefully that's something that will be fixed in the future. Now the other thing was it didn't tend to find me if I went underneath anything. So obviously if it's sort of 20 meters up in the air, um, it's not gonna be able to dive underneath the tree to follow me. But if it's just a few meters, I really would hope that it could just drop down and get past any obstacles um, that are about that kind of height. Now I was really impressed with the fact it could lose me and pick me up. Now there is a moment where it does have to sort of find me again or get back on track, which doesn't look great. However, um, all the footage is usable and as long as you bear the limitations in mind, it's something that you can work around. As I say, I think you could get some really high quality video, I was pushing this to the limits. So going forwards, if I ever need to use the active track, um, I now know the best way to use it and um, I think I can get some really professional footage out of it. So let me know what you think and would you be happy with these results?